so it seems like my office and bedroom space might not have been the best for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. So I decided to test it out in a bit of a different area, and this was the dog's first time seeing the RC vehicle. She inspected it a moment ago and then got a little bit scared, a little bit surprised when she noticed that it moved and came a little bit closer to her. At the beginning of this recording session, I did have my camera on my laptop on, which can be seen in the top right. It does go off a little bit later. So, it turns out that carpet was a little bit too thick for the wheels to go across. So, it couldn't quite work to go across there. So, to make this kind of loop of track, I actually had to fold up the carpet, as you can see in the top right there. Just fold up that one corner and hold it down with some pillows, essentially so that that corner wouldn't make the loop impossible to do because essentially this little front part of my house is basically just a bit of a loop so this is like our first time actually trying out a full proper track so i guess for some reason i just brain fart for a hot second and then okay then we then we get going so yeah, we actually get to try out like a bigger track here. It had a little bit of connectivity issues when it went like around the corner. So it would be nice if it was better at its connection if so much is going around a kind of small loop like this away from the switch, which is on the shelf on the left there as we're driving past it. If, it, if even that is a little bit difficult for it, but for the most part, it pretty much held up there. It mostly held up while we were doing some racing. But yeah, unlike the super compact and super dark kind of office bedroom space from the last episode, this was actually finally getting to try out like a full track here. Kind of something more like the way the game was meant to be played. Like I could have tried out some of those little arrow divider things that I guess I could have brought up, but ah oh well. Ah oh well, I suppose. Also, I still hadn't yet realized, because I still- this was still before I even did the editing for episode one, I still hadn't realized that these little- whatever they're called, divider things, the bar- whatever these little checkpoints are, or a little bit too high because their feet are supposed to be folded out onto the ground, so, uh, whoops. The bullet build kind of really scared me. I was really worried that it was gonna, like, ram into a wall since it wouldn't know properly what's what, but I'm really thankful that it didn't. Doggy goes a little bit crazy there, and to say the least, I think that she's honestly the thing that made this the most difficult, as, as we can kind of see there. She was very surprised about what was going on. I had to repeatedly tell her, like, no, it's not for you. You can't, can't attack it. You can't have it. But that wouldn't stop her from kind of chasing it and being perplexed like crazy about what's going on. Now, because you're seeing from the car's perspective, from Luigi's perspective here, you can't actually see it a lot of the time. But a lot of the time, she's chasing right behind. And I gotta say, having her involved has to make this like the freaking Dark Souls of go-karting. I had to yell at her a couple times to not attack it, kind of like that, that she did with her claws. She she acts very much like a cat a lot of the time, so I tried to always make sure that she was holding something so she will, at least wouldn't bite it, and if she attacked it with her paws, I'd have to, you know, call her off that. But she got very tempted many times, and sometimes it was hard to keep her from knocking over the dividers, the checkpoints, whatever the heck they're called. There is that little bump going from like that dining room into the kitchen kind of area and I'm glad that the car deals with that alright as well as those bumps with like the small carpet over there yeah like right on the left here it goes up a little bit but luckily it seems like it can handle bumps like that just fine Luigi does kind of go ow or whatever the heck but for the most part he seems to handle it just fine and like little bumps like this like carpet and then like way back down again seems to be mostly a-okay and then Dougie keeps switching between a few different toys and continuing to Continuing to chase the cart looks like I'm really glad that bombs in this game if your own bombs don't affect yourself because that would be like Way too chaotic to deal with and I mentioned it in the last episode next year at Fragapalooza I would very much love to host a tournament for this game and just looking at this and imagining the courses that we could Set up in the Duke Rec Center for that event and there goes the doggy leaving some of her toys in the middle of the track as everything's going on which definitely makes things a little bit tricky to say the least. But yeah, I can just imagine like some of the tracks that could be set up there. That'd be absolutely incredible. There's the doggy again. And there's the doggy's toy that the car got stuck on. Having me go from, I think it was first, 
to basically last. Oh, I guess I got third, but like... And there she is attacking again that you can see in the top right. So there were a few times that I had to call her off. To which she was a bit stunned too because I usually don't raise my voice with her like pretty much ever. So she got a little bit stunned like, no, why are you yelling at me? I'm like, no, don't damage my freaking, including tax, nearly $140 Canadian freaking set with the RC car and these dividers and stuff like that. Holy crap, my wallet took a hit today when I, when I picked this up. Let me tell you, there's that toy still in the corner. It looks like it's enough out of the way now. I do like how the different themes have these different effects and how it affects like the dividers, the checkpoints. I don't, I've completely forgotten the name for them. Something that I don't quite understand is just how fast these computers are. Look at that, freaking Morton overtaking me when I'm just doing a straightaway with the RC car and can't really go any faster with this anyway. Like, I guess I'm missing some of the item boxes because the hitboxes for it are a little bit weird when it's off the ground like that because I failed to realize that the feet fold out, which would make these checkpoints go lower to the ground. Oh yeah, somehow, despite being in second place, Bowser Jr. gets a blue shell, throws it from there, it goes all the way around the track. I was debating about whether I wanted to slow down and have like Bowser Jr. eat it. I, I decide not to just in case like it couldn't possibly hit the person who threw it. Just in case. So it went all the way around the track and it hit me. I rarely ever got item boxes. And I gotta say, literally the Dark Souls of go-karting when you have a dog while you're playing Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. It literally got lodged on the divider after she knocked it over. So in the middle of the race I had to go over, pick it up, and then have the cart go through. And it didn't actually recognize it as the finish line the first couple times that I went through. So I had to back out a significant distance to then recognizing it as the finish line. Oh, what happened? You know exactly what happened, Luigi. Freaking stage hazards, man. This is why they aren't legal in Smash. Let me tell ya. So, uh, you know, pretty great cup results. I, I think I definitely did pretty well there, to say the least. But anyway, I decided to move on to the next cup here and try out the try out the Star Cup and see how see how that went. I at least gotten silvers on the previous cups, I believe, in the last episode, but that time was straight up last place, so I mean, maybe this was my chance at redemption to do a little bit better. Dogie kind of getting a little bit stir crazy over there. Having no idea what's going on. It seems like a lot of the soundtrack is reused from Mario Kart 8, which which makes sense, I suppose. I was surprised that, like, a course like this, how many speed boosts there were, like, just going through the checkpoints and stuff. Like, thank goodness it wasn't, like, my office space that had, like, obstacles galore. Like, there usually wasn't too much of a worry of hitting things here in this loop, which is, like, way more spacious. Like, the only thing I had to be mindful of was the dog and that carpet that I had to move out of the way. And, yeah, there she is moving the dividers again and making things a little bit extra complicated. Literally the Dark Souls of go-karting, I swear. Mario Kart Home Circuit with a dog is literally the Dark Souls of go-karting. So I now had to account for that divider being a little bit tilted, which didn't seem like it was too big of an issue, thankfully. But I mean, you know, it could have, you know, just stayed straight as well. We can see a little bit of connection issues as it's going around that area. But unlike the first time when the course was initially being set up, it wasn't actually that bad. And look at that, I was basically going like max speed straight away almost the whole time, and still one of the CPUs beat me. So, uh, if they could adjust the AI a little bit, and this is just in 100cc by the way, if they could adjust that AI a little bit, I think that would be better off for the game, honestly. I think that right now it's a little bit, you know, a little bit much when it comes to their speed. That or... The fact that my little divider checkpoint things are so high to, you know, ensure that I never get item boxes, that could also be, like, one of the big reasons that, you know, it's as difficult as it is, because they're always getting item boxes and I'm not. I'm very rarely getting item boxes, so, you know, for next time I'll be sure to actually fold those feet outwards. I'll be sure to do that whenever the next time is. Also, Morton's one of those freaking a-holes who throws red shells backwards. Only the worst of the scum of the earth do that. You hate to see it. Yeah, that's what you get, Morton. Piece of crap. Anyway, 
When it came to those banana peels, I realized after I threw the first two, like, wait, I can't hold it behind me, like, as a shield, like in regular Mario Kart. But, if I get the warning that a red shell's coming after me anyway, then I should, in theory, just be able to throw it behind me quickly and block that. But, despite, like, straight away, basically full speed, the computers were still catching up on me once again, if you look at the map. Okay, a little bit of distance. They were catching up to me a bit more a moment ago. But, like, the computers are scary. Look at that. They're scary, man. They're absolutely scary. I'm always a little bit nervous about using the mushrooms because I'm afraid I'm going to, like, ram into something. There's always a little bit of a concern. And there's the dog staring at it. I had to keep telling her to, like, grab a toy several times to make sure that she, like, wouldn't bite the- There we go. There she had a toy. I think this is my least favorite hazard. At first, I thought, like, the cart was broken already from so much ramming. No, that's just the freaking hazard of this course. That wind controls my steering by a significant bit. Like, you can see when I'm just going forward and turning slightly to the left. Or sometimes majorly. Like, the wind will change its intensity on this course. And I hate it. And there's another dog toy. Getting in the way again. I think... I don't know what this course is called, but look how violently it steers me to the right! It's awful! Like, jeez, there was my first blue shell that I got. Like, it's so hard when it pushes your steering over so much. And there's bumping onto the corner. If I do manage to host a tournament of this at, say, Fragapalooza next year, that might be a course to just never do, or do it like once to be mean i guess we're jumping into the future a little bit here after i got a little bit stuck on that corner we're back into things here i swear it's so easy to get stuck with this freaking hazard it sucks it's so hard to maneuver please nerf this hazard nintendo please it sucks it's awful please nerf it yeah, <laughs> yeah! goes to luigi yes luigi and the lead here for now. Unless that was the final race. Oh yeah, it was the final race. So that was the first time that I got gold in one of these Grand Prix. And we got some more things. Another radio network and another, like, environment thing. I really don't like that sensor. So look at that. First gold when I have, like, silvers in those other ones. And in the Shell Cup, I kind of sucked. So next, we decide to hop on into Banana Field. There's the doggy. Just kind of staring at it again. Like, why am I not allowed to attack it? It's moving and stuff. Please let me attack it. So there we are, doing a loop. I swear, this <laughs> playthrough has resulted in me showing more of my house on this channel than I ever have before. It's like Sakurai doing those, like, presents presentations. Whatever they're called. Those, they're not direct, but those... I don't even know what they are. They're not directs, they're not tree houses, but the showcases of, like, Smash stuff. It's like Sakurai when he's like, this, yes, this is my home. Except, you know, this is quite literally going around my home and stuff. So, uh, you know, there's the front door. Here's, like, the living room and stuff with the carpet that we moved out of the way. The doggy loves that carpet, by the way. Like, oftentimes, if I'll wake up and come up to get some breakfast, I'll just, like, find her sprawl out across that carpet. That mushroom baited me so hard into ramming straight into that pole. <laughs> that kind of blends in with the floor a little bit. Well, sometimes I'll come up in the morning to get, like, a bowl of cereal for breakfast or something like that, and I'll just see the doggy, like, sprawled out on that carpet, kind of in a nice sunny spot, all, all happy and relaxed and stuff like that. Down that hall, like, way far on the right is where I used to stay before I developed, like, this current stream room. Because the space down here is a bedroom attached to this office, as was showcased in the first episode. So I was like, wait a second, this space, which used to just be for misc storage, could be developed into a stream room. Which it has been, and I'm really, really glad for that. But way back when, I used to live, used to stay at the end of that hall, and there's the doggy staring at the thing again. So, like, it's a small, pretty small two-story home, but is cozy and schnice and stuff, and it gets the job done as a freaky home and stuff. That's all that's important. Let's go. So, yeah, this is a living room right here, which is attached to, like, the dining room over there, which is, like, very rarely used, but kind of... Oh, yeah, this, this course with all the spooky ghosts. I guess if you hit one of the ghosts, it kind of gives you a brief jump scare, block your vision kind of weird thing, essentially. 
So yeah, there's opening area, there's a closet over there, then here's the living room, then there's a dining room right over there. And stuff. It seems like it restricts your steering when you get lightning bolted in this. We've got the kitchen over here, the nice island in the middle and stuff like that. There's a hall with like offices and bedrooms down the hall and stuff. And that's basically the entire top floor of the house. That's basically the whole top floor, essentially. And then downstairs, the only thing that hasn't really been showcased, apart from like the stuff in the first episode, is basically like the basement kind of living room that this room and office is kind of attached to. That's basically it, and that's basically like the whole house. Like, so maybe at some point I might do an episode of like the kind of basement living room kind of space, I'd have to move my secondary switch dock. And speaking of moving my secondary switch dock, this was recorded on my laptop with my old capture card, which is essentially my spare capture card nowadays. So, like, the video isn't the best, like, both because of, like, the connection itself between, like, the console and the car, and just because I'm using, like, a much worse, like, streaming slash recording computer and capture card, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So, this would probably be, like, my kind of mobile setup for wherever I go to record potential future episodes of this game. I don't know how long the series is gonna go on. But yeah, if we do do another one, like, downstairs in the kind of basement living room area, then we've basically seen, like, the whole house in this series. <laughs> basically. And I was looking forward to trying out this Tornado Tundra and seeing what was up. Audio oh, skipping a beat for a hot second there. But then... Then disaster struck. I ran out of battery. To be fair, I did kind of record the first and second episodes relatively back to back, and that was just the battery that it had out of the box from the get-go, and I hadn't charged it. It's plugged in and charging right now as I'm tubbing this over, but at the time, I had not yet actually charged it. That was just like the half battery that I had out of the box, which actually served for like a decent while, to say the least. Apparently, it takes like like way shorter of a time for it to run out of battery if you if you run in like 200 cc and stuff and i guess that's the end of the end of the recording and such so that was that essentially that was that and now after all that excitement among other excitement like going out for some nice long strolls despite how cold it is outside. We got our first snow today here in this part of Canada. It's not even Halloween yet. It's literally October 16th as I'm recording this and we got our first snow today. And it's windy as heck and so freezing out. And I need to find my winter jacket. I just got like a windbreaker thing and went out today when I when I took her out for a, for a good stroll. And she enjoyed that. So after that excitement and after the excitement of chasing an RC car around and attacking it and being told to not attack it she's she's rather tired to say the least yeah i'm talking about you i'm talking about you you over here who's now rather tired to say the least but yeah so this was the space that we were using before during the first episode kind of down that hall and then back here and it def i would say it definitely is not enough space to use for that kind of game you definitely need like a bigger space kind of thing for it and yeah, Dogi had a lot of excitement today, and now she's happily dozing off on the back couch over here. I was just here getting ready to like video edit this, and she comes and like runs right past me, hops up right onto the couch, and plop down, and she's basically out for the night. And she's basically just done for the day. Aren't you? Aren't you silly, Dogi? Very exciting, exhausting day for her, to say the least, but she had fun. She definitely had fun. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that'll wrap up, wrap up this episode. I guess we'll be continuing from like another different space again with like some different courses and stuff. And yeah, thanks everybody who stopped by to watch this part. I don't know where the third episode's gonna be. We'll figure it out at some point. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.